State Women's Center. Um, and I'm here to talk about dating, relationships, sexual harassment, and sexual assault when traveling abroad. All right, so these are just some of the resources that were used um, to make this PowerPoint. Lee Ledoux, who, is one, who works at the Women's Center, she's the one who made it, and so I'm just going off of that. So cultural sensitivity. Obviously, when you're going abroad, you're going to be involved in different cultures, and you want to get as immersed as possible, but that's never an excuse to put yourself in a situation where you're feeling uncomfortable. So it's always important to make sure you know the cultural, um, the differences in the culture and how you can act in them without putting yourself uneasy, because it's always good to trust your gut. If you're ever in a situation when you're abroad and you have an uneasy feeling, don't just go along with it because you think you're supposed to because you're in this new culture. It's important to trust yourself and to know, okay, if this feels weird, maybe something's weird, I should look into it. So it's just good to know the differences between male and female friend, uh, friendships, friendliness with strangers, holding hands when, with walking, just knowing what is culturally acceptable there. So it's also good to know some of the different laws and the social climate around things like LGBT issues. Because um, you need to be aware that maybe same-sex sex touch may have different meanings. So it's good to know the laws and then just also how people feel about it in that culture. And you can find a lot of this stuff online and I'm sure they're telling you it in your breakout sessions. All right, so one of the most important things is to, this says uh, women traveling alone is bad and yes, but it's also good for men to always travel in groups as well. The more people you have, the less likely you are to get targeted. Um, so a lot of times we think that even in European countries, there's a very, it's very Americanized there and that it wouldn't be an issue. But it's the same as here where you just have to be safe when you're going out or when you're doing stuff. It's always good to be in a group. It's always good to have more people there or to have plans set up where everyone knows where you are. So it's good to be informed. So like it says on the bottom, to talk to other women who have traveled in the country you're going to, because sometimes it's not always as it seems. I know I did the study abroad program to Southeast Asia, and before we went over there, I was very worried that we'd have to be dressed super conservatively, because they kind of put that in our heads a little bit, you know, dressed super conservatively, and you were supposed to, but when we got over there, it was completely different. People were in sandals, we thought we couldn't wear sandals, and stuff like that. So it's good to talk to people who have gone to the places that you're going to be going to, because they'll have a bunch of insider information that you may not get anywhere else. So dating and relationships, it's always good to know um, just the different rules. like. Like I've said before, in cultures, you know, different touch and different body language mean different things. So it's good to know. Um, you can talk to people there. I'm sure you'll make friends. Um, so and be honest if you're confused by any interaction. If you don't understand exactly what's going on with somebody, I'm, they're going to know that you're not from the culture and that you can ask questions. No one's going to be a jerk about that. And then it's always important to plan ahead. Bring really any prescriptions. And I know Isofene will talk more about that. but. It's good to take emergency contraception or plan B there, just in case. Um, sexual harassment, that's going to be different in every single country too. So it's going to be really important that you know to look up the laws or the rules surrounding it or the culture around it. Um, what may be illegal here may not be illegal in a host country. Um, but that doesn't mean that you need to compromise any of your personal values or if you're uncomfortable with anything, just because it's okay in that culture doesn't mean that you have to be okay with it. Um, so don't feel compelled to return unwanted attention or engage in conversation. Obviously, you want to be friendly. You're going over there. You want to meet people from this culture and meet new people. But it's the same as here. If you're ever un uncomfortable, then you know don't be afraid to get out of that situation. Um, and then it's also important to look at the university policy because if uh, They'll have a bunch of stuff on the code of conduct and everything that if you ever have a problem with another student, not just somebody from the other culture. Um, so effective techniques to when you don't want to talk with somebody is good to ignore them or pretend ignorance, feign confusion, move away, and if that doesn't work, be assertive. The broken record technique is where you just repeat what you're saying. If you're like, no, I don't want to talk to you. 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 You just keep going and they'll get annoyed. Um, so just examples, if they ask you out to the movies or something, just some random stranger and you don't want to go, you can say no and just 
use any of these techniques. All right, so a lot of this is just anything. It's not just sexual assault. This stuff can put you um, to be a victim in any way, really, uh, to get like robbed or anything like that. So just, just knowing these things can set you apart. Being a tourist and standing out, not knowing the local customs, not knowing the language well, traveling on public transportation, um, have not learned the cultural way to say no. So all of these stuff is really stuff that you can look up beforehand and kind of be familiar with. It's good to research as much as you can and talk to people as much as you can to know what in your specific culture is okay and what's not okay. And, you know, um, and then obviously it's the same as here. Drinking can make you a target for any crime, so it's always good to keep that under control. Sometimes when you can't drink here and you go over to another country and you can drink, it's like, yeah, but you got to be safe about it. Um, and one of the most important things is uh, believing it can never happen to you. That's one of the biggest factors is people think, oh, not a big deal, it's not going to happen to me. So then they don't take any precautions or they don't really think about it because, I mean, you never want to think that anything bad is going to happen to you when you're abroad. Um, but it's just good to have that in your mindset that, you know, it's a possibility. Obviously, don't let it keep you from doing stuff or trying new experiences, but it's always good to just be prepared. So this is just um, some information about date rape drugs because they're just as popular over there as here. So it's the same really as over here. Just be aware and, you know, if you see something that makes you uncomfortable, then don't be afraid to stand up for yourself or to just get out of the situation. It's the same as here. Don't leave your drinks alone. Don't, you know, take random open drinks from strangers. It's kind of common to know. Um, so a lot of times when you're abroad, unfortunately, you do occasionally come across people who aren't the best people in the world, and maybe they want to gain something from you or cause harm. So it's just important to know um, some of the things that perpetrators can do to manipulate, to manipulate you. Um, they like to establish premature trust. They're really charming. Too many details, which is a tactic for lying, typecasting. Um, unsolicited, giving to great indebtedness. So if they're like, oh, I'll pay for your cab, I'll pay for your cab or something, and then later on they can use that sometimes. Um, discounting no, so if they just ignore you when you're saying you don't want to do something. So it's just important to look out for these. Uh, obviously, like I said, you're going to want to meet new people. That's why you're going abroad. It's part of the culture. You want to meet people, so don't be scared of everyone that you meet or anything. But it's just good to you know, be smart about it and look after yourself. Um, so progressive invasions is a lot of times it starts with touch, like just lightly touching on the arm or anything like that. So if you're ever uncomfortable with that, you know, just you say no or something. Even if you think like, oh, I don't want to offend them because, you know, I don't know about this culture and maybe that's rude. So it's good to know beforehand what's culturally acceptable. But then if you feel uncomfortable, then you can say you're uncomfortable or you can back away from the situation. Um, so just more ways to minimize risk. Uh, make friends with women and learn norms. This is mainly for women, but obviously it's the same for men too. You know, you want to make friends and you know, stay how, know how to stay safe, know where everyone is. Pay attention to your inner voice. That's one of the most important things. If you feel like something's wrong, chances are it's wrong. You, know, you always should trust your gut. Um, travel together and know where you're going. If going out in a group, stay in the group and don't leave anyone behind. Familiarize yourself with phrases and gestures that may be interpreted as sing signaling sexual availability. So that's one of those, just knowing the cultural norms. Um, so strategies used by other students, they said to listen what what is being said around you, be alert of suspicious activity, walk in well-lit areas, and know where to go for help. So know where your embassy is or know where you can go back, um, how to get back to wherever you're staying, just knowing where the police station is, just and stuff like that. More minimizing risks. Don't drink beyond your limits. Don't leave drinks unattended. Don't accept drinks from anybody um, if they're open. So just it's basically stuff for here too that you would do going downtown. 
So if something happens, you can always talk to the faculty or the main um, hotline. But one of the important things is to note the call public safety and ask to be transferred. They're, they'll take your calls 24-7. So if you're like trying to reach somebody and you can't get through to them, sometimes it's best to just call public safety and have them contact the person for you so you're not wasting your minutes or if you're in crisis or, you know, they can help you fairly well. Um, and then what if you have a problem with another student from the US. Sometimes people, if something happens, they don't want to say anything because the person's on the program with them and they don't want to have them get sent home or anything like that. But it's important to know that when you're over there, even if you're at a different university, you're under the St. Cloud State Code of Conducts. So if they're doing anything that violates those Code of Conducts, then you can always use that. So yeah, any questions? <laughs> I went really quick, sorry.